Hello again, everyone. It's Coleman Swartz with BBB. We are taking care of business and we are talking finance today. We're talking banking and finance with one of our friends. This is Miss Miss Michelle Small. She is the CEO of Kelly Community Federal Credit Union. Michelle, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Before we get started, I want to congratulate you guys because as of October 1, Kelly Community is a 20 year BBB accredited business as I cover my face, 20 years. That's awesome, so congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I wanna start out real quick, give the folks who are watching a, a history of your organization of Kelly Community Federal Credit Union. Absolutely, so we've been here more than 50 years. We were started by eight gentlemen that uh, opened the Kelly Springfield Tire Plant at the time. So uh, they came from a place that had a credit union and they opened this uh, tire plant here and they wanted a credit union here locally to serve those people there uh, at the plant. So we were started by eight gentlemen, $40 that they brought together um, to start the credit union. So looking back over those 50 years um, and all that where we started from and where we are today is pretty amazing. Started with $40. That's that's yeah. pretty great. That shows you just how much the times have changed. So. Um, give me, give me kind of your current status though, because you mentioned something to me, you guys building a new building or remodeling a new building. So things on the up and up here in 2020. Absolutely. So, uh, definitely we've grown and, um, although the plant closed down, the community has really supported us and we've been able to really just give back to the community in such a way that we didn't have enough space for all of the employees to be able to serve our members. So we built an administrative building that opened up about a year ago, and then our Grande facility needed to be remodeled, and we're finishing it up right now. We're super excited about it. It's been a long, I guess, two years of construction. Y'all know that. Y'all are building a building. Yep. Um, it's been a long two years, but we're excited to have the administrative building up and running and the Grande branch remodeled, and really how it's just helped the community and some of the technologies we've been able to bring on because of it that has really um, helped during this COVID time, to be honest. So you mentioned the Grande location. Folks, if, if you don't know where that's at, tell people where the new or the remodeled location is. Absolutely. So we're on Grande Boulevard, right in between Old Jacksonville Highway and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And then our other location is on Fifth Street, right across the street from TJC on Clayton and Fifth Street. There you go. Pretty simple understand. Okay, so one of the most common questions I have or that I ask is, you guys are a credit union. You're a financial institution credit union. And then you have banks. So you have credit unions and banks. And while on the surface, they generally operate the same, right? They hold money, they do lending, et cetera, et cetera. What is the difference between a credit union, you guys, and a traditional bank? Great question. So I get asked that often. And like you said, we can do lending just like a bank can do lending. All the stuff that the consumer sees, credit unions can really do the same thing and do do the same things that banks do. Banks do. It's where we started. Um, so I told you we started with eight gentlemen. It's a philosophy. So credit unions are not-for-profit financial cooperatives. So at the end of the day, we're not looking to make a profit. Um, now we have to make a profit and pay the light bills and pay our employees sure. and stuff, but we're not looking to make that profit. So the decisions are based on uh, a little differently because of where the philosophy comes from. Something that um, most people don't realize is our board of directors are completely volunteers. They don't get paid at all. They don't get an incentive at the end of the year. They don't get a big bonus at the end of the year, depending on how we do. And so that's a, a definitely a structural difference than a bank. Um, not that banks are bad, I'm not saying that by yeah. any means. Just their board of directors are paid and at credit unions, they're not paid. So it's a fundamental difference that we're just a not-for-profit financial cooperative. So a lot of our decisions are made differently because of that uh, fundamental difference. I hear a lot um, credit unions will often refer to people as members. They're members of a credit union. Explain what that means if I'm a member of a credit union. So great question. Sometimes there's some negative connotation when people hear members because um, they think of membership and oh my gosh, I signed up for a membership and now I'm going to have to dollars $20 every month for the next and that's not the case at all with credit unions. Um, you do have to, because of how credit unions are structured and, and the regulation behind them, you have to be eligible to be a member. And as long as you're eligible to be a member, then you can join that credit union. 
Um, each credit union is a little differently. There's not a monthly fee. There's not a, anything like that that you associate with your Netflix or, or your sure. fitness workout program by any means. For us, you have to be um, either live, work, worship, volunteer, or attend school inside Smith County. Okay. Anybody that does any of those things or has an immediate family member that does is eligible for membership here at the credit union. So unfortunately, if somebody lived, say, in the Brownsboro era, which is outside of Smith County, and they didn't work inside Smith County, and they didn't attend school inside Smith County, and they didn't go to church inside Smith County, if they didn't do any of those things, then they wouldn't, then while they're really, really close to us, they wouldn't yeah. be eligible for membership. And that's just a regulatory legal thing. Um, that keeps credit part of what keeps credit unions different right we were started i guess i didn't say this completely earlier but we were started by the plant and early on you had to be an employee of the plant uh -huh. that was the only way you could have a membership of the credit union over the years we've been able to adapt and have our um, membership charter change a little bit so now it's smith county as our borders every credit union is a little different but ours is smith county does that answer it, your question it does and and so the next logical follow-up would be if you wanted to expand, how do you even consider expanding? Say you're like, hey, Longview, Red County, different, completely different area. How do you even go about that? Is that even possible under the current structure of, say, your credit union? Great question. So there, um, expansion is possible. It's not really easy. You can't just say, yeah, I want to go into um, Greg okay. County. Yes. So we're a federal charter, so we would have to go through the federal government to okay. be able to expand that charter. We'd have to ask to expand it. We'd have to give them reasons to expand it. A lot of what they look for in credit unions is where are underserved areas? Okay. Where are some areas that don't have a lot of um, banks available to them and specifically credit unions available to them? And in Gray County, there's lots of credit unions. So sure. I would think I'm probably gonna have, if that's something we want to do, we would have a harder time getting into Gray County. Um, versus there's some other counties around us that don't have and they're really underserved a little bit more. And that would be an area that the federal government probably would allow me to expand in this year. Um, that being said, every every credit every credit union has a different set of stand. We'll call them standards, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be where you live or work. Um, I see I see others in town. It looks like they're directed towards teachers, right? So they're a teacher. So that's correct, right? Every every credit union kind of has a different set of standards. Absolutely. So that's our um, field of membership. There we go. Um, and who is able to join the standard, if you will? And each credit union is a little different. There's some that are still. Um, so I believe it, um, is it Keystone? I could be wrong on that. I don't think they've moved to a community charter yet. Well, city, I know for sure. Okay. Um, they, you have to be an employee of the city of Tyler to okay. be able to join city's credit union. Um, so you can't just live here. You have to be an employee sure. and maybe family members as well. I'm, I'm not super um, detailed on their charter, um, but that's a great example. Every credit union is a little different. Uh, it could be by where you work. It could be type of employment teacher. It could be by zip code. It mm -hmm. could be by county. It could be by city. Great. Okay. What is what is the last? I don't know. Let's take the last year in terms of financial movement in the country. What have you seen from your perspective? The financial perspective. Uh, maybe it's lending, maybe it's banking in general. We see a lot of new banks, right? There's startups, they're online only. Uh, there's no more, or let's say there's less of maybe the physical building, brick and mortar banks. Um, what has been the biggest shift, I guess, recently in, in your kind of field? Oh, wow, that is a big question, Colin. Yeah, it's multi, <laughs> multi layered. It is. So if I stay with uh, locally in our membership first, the biggest thing that's happened in the last year, um, really, and I guess maybe six months, uh, what COVID has done is two layered. We've seen a lot of members save more money yeah. and, um, and not spend as much. And I think across the nation, people have seen that happen. The other side is the number of people that didn't have a great savings account and they were living paycheck to paycheck. So now you're having to work with your financial institutions. Sure. We've worked with many of our members to figure out how do we how do we get through this together um, and, and keep you moving and keep you in your car to go to work and all those things. So if I say real super local to our membership, those are the two things we've probably seen definitely in the last six months shift and overnight. If you yeah. Will. 
Um, as far as the last year in the industry, uh, probably like you say, more and more is going digital. Um, I think our, our world is moving more and more digital. Um, part of it is because people want things quicker. And the only way to make it quicker is to do it digitally. Yeah. Um, if it's going to have to be in person and it's going to have to be a physical thing, it just takes longer. It's, that's just a fact. And so the, the more um, we want as consumers things to be quicker and faster and more efficient, if you will, then we're having to move more digital. And I think you're seeing that more and more uh, with banks and credit unions what they're able to do digitally. Definitely you talk about the number of banks and stuff that are popping up. Sure. Um, I don't know that we've seen a ton of it in our area, but definitely a little. Uh, but I think most of what you have seen in our area is the more digital that uh, banks and credit unions have went to be able to let you get your money quicker, faster, ways for you to be able to deposit that money quicker, faster, um, and, and transfer money between friends or people, mm -hmm. payments, those types of things. It's probably been the biggest shift we've seen in the last year. Well, that, and, and you touched on it, people saving their money, I think, and obviously I don't want to get political or anything, but that was one of the, I guess, the unintended consequences when they sent out stimulus checks is people held on to it because we've got a little money and when, what we really wanted was people to get the money and then immediately turn around and go buy something with it. And, and it was, um, I think not that they didn't, not that people didn't anticipate it, but we didn't know how many people would hold on to it and say, I, I can survive for now, but I'll hold on to this until I really need it. Yes, and we had the two different types of um, people, those that held on to it and those that needed it right then and there to pay their next bill and it was gone. Um, and so, and it was gone on a, on a, on a bill that was yeah. needed, a house payment, electric bill, that type of thing. Um, so very interesting, you know, you never know, like you said, you never know how it's going to work. I know what their intentions were when they yep. did it. Um, and then you just have to wait it out to see, see what happens. So. All right. So I'll be, I'll be curious of your time here. Um, Tell us about just everything that's going on with you guys. You've built the new building. Uh, you're celebrating obviously a milestone with us. So we thank you. We thank you for that. You've been around here for what, half a century. What does the future hold now? So we just content. Thank you, first of all, for partnering with us for the well, last 20 years. That's great. What you guys do in our community, um, our community is definitely blessed by what you guys do and how you can share the information you guys share and. Uh, what a great resource to know that you can go and look up who to be trusted in town. So thank you for what you guys do. Thank you for partnering with us. Well, you're welcome. Um, as, absolutely. As far as what's next for us, you know, we hope, as since we've got 50 years behind us, we hope to have another 50 years in mm -hmm. front of us and really just serving our community. You know, when we talk about the roots of where we started with and just those eight gentlemen and serving that plant, now now our, you know, who we serve is, is much larger. It's not just one plant, um, but it's the entire Smith County community. So we're constantly trying to connect and work with, collaborate with people here in Smith County and how can we help our own county financially yep. get their financial dreams as a consumer. We are definitely based and, and look for the consumer, not the business loan. We really are focused on the consumer and how can we help them achieve their financial dreams and what does that look like? And what's coming next for them and how, how can we provide a lot of different educations and uh, constantly, again, working with different partners in town to, to serve our community right here and what that looks like. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Um, uh, we appreciate everything that you guys have done, both for our communities, for us at BBB, for the Smith County, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If people need to find you, uh, if they need the big, beautiful building, you're in between Old Jacksonville and Broadway. I'm not going to lie, there's a couple of financial institutions in a row, um, so somebody will be able to help you there. Uh, but if they need to find you online or just give you a buzz, how can they do that? So our online is kellycommunity.org, okay. and then our phone number is 903-597-7291, and we'd love to help anybody we can. Well, Michelle, we appreciate you. Um, uh, if ever there's anything uh, we can do for her, we appreciate you. And folks, we appreciate you for watching. That's Miss Michelle Small. She's the CEO of Kelly Community Federal Credit Union. They have been with BBB 20 years. I can't do this without blocking my face, but 20 years. So we appreciate you, Michelle. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.